Hi Year 5, welcome back to the Jamie Drake equation and we are now, can you believe it, on chapter 11. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do when I get home from school is head straight for the observatory at the top of Beacon Hill. I've got to find Professor Forster and tell her what's happening to me. If this golden spiral on my phone is some kind of alien message that I've downloaded from the Hubble Space Telescope, then she'll know what to do. But when I open the back door, I see Haley sitting at the kitchen table with Grandad, and I remember that it's time for our weekly video conference with Dad. Haley Collins was the first British astronaut to walk in outer space. Ten years ago, she was on the International Space Station, just like Dad is now. She took part in a two-person EVA, that's an extravehicular activity, or spacewalk for short, to repair a solar panel that had been damaged by a micrometeorite strike. Haley is our family escort. This means that while Dad's in space, she's the person who helps to look after Mum, Charlie and me, keeping us up to speed with everything that's happening with Dad's mission. Haley makes sure that all our communications with the ISS like our weekly family video conference, run smoothly. If there's any problem that needs sorting, she's the person who can call Mission Control and put us straight through to Dad. Sometimes it can get a bit scary, worrying about all the things that could go wrong while Dad's up there in space, but Haley's always great at keeping us calm. One of the first times we talked to Dad on the ISS via video link, Charlie suddenly started shrieking as the face of a giant ant filled the screen. This was really a normal-sized ant that had escaped from one of the experiments on board the space station. It just looked huge as it floated in front of the camera lens. Dad had to quickly abort the video call so he could capture the ant, but when the screen went back black, Jack Charlie just kept on screaming. She was convinced that the International Space Station had been invaded by giant alien bugs and that Dad was going to be eaten alive. Me and Mum tried to explain about the ant experiment, but Charlie wouldn't listen to anything we said. Only Haley could get her to calm down by saying that the ISS had a space bug zapper installed that, is, that splattered any alien invaders as soon as they appeared. Charlie stopped crying then, and when Dad reappeared on the screen ten minutes later, my little sister just wanted him to show her all the zapped aliens. Me and Mum had been too busy trying to make Charlie understand, while Haley just focused on stopping my sister from worrying. Haley says that's what astronauts do, solve the problem in front of them. Hi Jamie, Haley says, putting down her mug of tea to greet me with a smile. Ready to talk to your dad? This is our last video call before Dad's spacewalk. When he comes home next week, we won't need a family escort anymore. I think I'm going to miss her. Is this the last time you're coming to see us? I ask. No, silly, Haley grins. I'll be back on Friday for your Dad's spacewalk. We'll watch the light swarm launch together. Mission Control have arranged for a live link with your Dad's helmet cam. You'll get to see an astronaut's view of the EVA. She can't hide her own excitement. I wouldn't miss it for the world. At the mention of Dad's spacewalk, my stomach does a somersault. For a second, I think this is just nerves about Dad's mission. But then it gurgles again. I really need to go to the toilet. Well, if you're all off to speak to Dan Dare, Grandad says, getting up from the table with a groan, I'm going out to the barn to give my drum kit a good thrashing. That blinking nurse didn't say anything about me not playing the drums. So while Grandad heads to the barn to vent his frustration and Haley phones mission control, I make a dash for the dash for the bathroom. I'm just zipping my trousers back up when I hear a buzzing sound above the noise of the toilet flush. I pull my mobile out of my pocket. In the centre of the home screen, the golden spiral is still spinning. The icon looking even larger than it did last time. The phone vibrates again in the palm of my hand. I feel the same tingling sensation that I felt behind my eyes just before things got strange at school. I still don't know how that weird alien picture got onto my sheet of paper. I don't remember drawing anything at all. And even if I did, there's no way I could have made an amazing picture like that 
I usually can't even draw stick men without making a mistake, but that extraterrestrial landscape almost looked like a photograph. My finger hovers over the golden spiral, wishing I could just click to unlock this mystery. What are you? I murmur, trying to make sense of it all. The mobile vibrates again, sending a strange tingle up my arm, as the toilet flush finally gurgles into silence. All I can hear is a constant hum that seems to be coming from my phone. Then, through the drone, I hear the sound of a voice crackling from the speaker. We are... Bzz. We are... Bzz. I stare at my phone, open-mouthed. Hello? I say, holding the phone close to my ear. Who's there? There's no reply. My mobile has stopped vibrating now and the only buzzing sound that I can hear is coming from a wasp that's just flown in through the bathroom window. Maybe I just imagined that voice. We are the... I nearly dropped the phone down the toilet. Who are you? I'm so shocked that I can't stop myself from blurting out the answer. I'm Jamie, I stutter. Help! Bzz. The voice coming from the speaker doesn't sound like a person. It's more robotic, like one of those phone calls you get when somebody sends a text message to your home phone instead of your mobile. If this is a message from outer space, then maybe Buzz here is leaving a voicemail. But before I can listen to the rest of it, the bathroom door handle rattles, followed by the sound of Charlie's voice outside. Jamie, come quick, she squeals. Daddy's on TV. I'll be right there. I shout. Switching my phone into silent mode, I quickly shove it back into my pocket. If I've really downloaded some kind of intergalactic distress signal, then my spaceman dad will know what to do. Chapter 12 Squeezed next to Mum and Charlie on the sofa, I stare at Dad's face on our brand new TV. This one fixed higher up on the wall, so Grandad can't pull it down. Behind Dad, I can see a tangle of wires and cables snaking around the interior of the International Space Station. Back here on Earth, Haley is sitting in the armchair next to the living room door out of sight of the video camera, but still close by in case anything goes wrong with the connection. Hey guys, Dad says, his face, face breaking into a smile. How are you doing? Because of the satellite relay, there's always a two second delay between the moment Dad speaks and when we hear him. At first, this made our video calls a bit of a nightmare, as Charlie kept getting upset when Dad didn't seem to be listening to her straight away. But we've worked out a system now. Charlie talks first so she can tell Dad her news while Mum and me wait for our turn. So while Charlie starts telling Dad about how she fed the bunnies at nursery school today, I think about what just happened with my phone. Professor Forster said that the only extraterrestrial signal the human race has ever received was a 72-second beacon beam from the stars. On Friday, Dad sent in a swarm of space probes to Tauchetti, one of our nearest stars, but they'll still take 15 years to get there, travelling at nearly light speed, and any information they beam back will take another 15 years to reach Earth. So if Buzz is a message sent from alien planet, how come it's talking back to me? On the rug in front of the TV, Charlie's showing Dad how she's learned to do a cartwheel. Collapsing in a giggling heap on the floor, she squeals with delight as Dad demonstrates a space somersault, his head disappearing backwards as his knees and legs fill the screen before flipping right round again. Again, again, Charlie squeals, still giggling uncontrollably. Then she stops and turns towards Mum with a worried look on her face. I think I've done a wee. Never mind. Mum replies with a weary sigh. Getting up from the sofa, she takes Charlie by the hand. I'll just have to get her a change of clothes, Dan, Mum says, as Dad raises a guilty hand in apology. Why don't you have a chat with Jamie? On the TV screen, I watch as Dad plucks a floating pen out of the air. Oops, pen overboard, he says, one of the hazards of space gymnastics. He tucks this back into his top pocket and then nods his head as if hearing Mum's reply. So, how are things with you, son? I don't know what to say. From the hallway, I can still hear Charlie complaining as Mum leads her up the stairs. The silence lengthens into six, seven, eight seconds, my brain still trying to find the right words. Are you still receiving me? Dad asks, leaning towards the camera with a frown. 
We're still receiving you, Dan, Hayley calls out brightly from the other side of the room. Jamie's just having a bit of a think. She gets up out of her chair. I'll just go and give your mum a hand with Charlie, she says, moving towards the door. Give you and your dad some space to talk. Is everything okay? Dad says, his voice overlapping with the end of Hayley's sentence as she heads out of the room. I watch him bob in microgravity, his face still creased in concern. Dad, I say, I think I've got aliens on my phone. There's a pause as my words zoom 400 kilometres up into space. Then Dad laughs out loud. A good one, Jamie, he says with a grin. Is this some new game you've got then? I thought Mum wasn't too keen on you downloading things to your phone. No, Dad, I try to explain, struggling to put it all into words. I think it's a real alien message. You see, I downloaded it from the Hubble Test Space Telescope. At first, I thought it was some kind of computer virus, as it just kept on buzzing all the time, but then it tried to turn my finger into a torch. All these really weird things have been happening at school today, and now it started talking to me. It says its name is Buzz. I think it's... Whoa, Dad says, the echo of his voice cutting across mine. Slow down, Jamie. You're not making any sense. I pause to catch my breath. It's weird. Dad might be the one who's weightless, but I kind of feel lighter now that I've t told him everything. Dad always said I can tell him anything, any problem I've got, any worry I have, and he'll help me to sort it out. That's why it's been so hard with Dad up in space, especially when the main thing I'm worried about is Dad being up in space. Now at least I've got my own problem for him to sort out. All I needed was for Dad to believe me, and now he'll be able to tell me what to do. First of all, the Hubble Space Telescope stopped working last year, Dad says. So you couldn't have downloaded anything from it, especially not an alien message. I know, but Professor Forster hacked into the telescope. Who's Professor Forster? She's an astronomer, I tell him. I met her at the observatory at the top of Beacon Hill. She's looking for aliens just like you. Jamie, my mission's a bit more complicated than that. I think the signal might be some kind of distress call. Buzz says they need help. Our sentences are overlapping now. The satellite delay causing our words to crush into each other. Raising his hand, Dad waits until there's a moment of silence and then he starts to speak again. I know this mission has been hard on you, Jamie, he says. Especially with me missing your birthday on Friday. But you don't have to make up this story about alien messages just to get my attention. It's not a story, I protest, pulling out my mobile phone. On the home screen, the golden spiral is frozen mid-spin. Taking the phone out of silent mode, I tap my finger against the screen, but nothing happens. No buzzing sound, no robotic voice, nothing to prove that I'm telling the truth. It is true, I say, holding the phone up to the camera so Dad can see the home screen. I think this spiral is the alien signal. I just need you to help me work out what it means. On the TV screen, Dad's frown deepens as he listens to my words. That's when I realise. He doesn't believe me. My voice trails into silence. I don't know what else I can say. Look, Jamie, Dad replies, his face still creased in concern. After Friday, the Luxaterna mission will be complete. The light swarm probes will be on their way to Tocchetti and I can head for home. Why don't you show me this signal when I get back and we can work out what it is then? Dad's mission is all about searching for signs of alien life, so why won't he believe what I'm saying? But before I can say anything else, Mum walks back into the living room. Haley's helping Charlie get dressed, she announces, as she sits back down on the sofa. She wants to show you the fancy dress space suit she's going to wear to nursery after your spacewalk on Friday. While she waits for Dad to get the message via the satellite relay, Mum turns towards me. Could I just have a word with your dad on my own for a bit, Jamie, she asks. We've got a few things we need to discuss in private. Still feeling let down by Dad's reaction, I nod my head. I've got to go now, Dad, I say, getting up from the so sofa. I'll see you soon. Bye, Jamie, Dad calls out, holding up his hand like he always does. And have a great birthday on Friday. I'll be thinking of you, son. I press my hand against his on the TV screen, trying my hardest not to cry. I wish he was home right now so I could talk to him properly. It's strange, but as I close the door behind me, I can only hear silence. It's as though Mum's waiting until the coast is clear, until she talks to Dad. 
Thinking about it, it's not really fair that she's hijacked our family video call just to have a private chat with Dad. What's so private that they can't talk about it in front of me anyway? And then the answer jumps into my head. My birthday present! Dad said he's got me the best Lego set yet, but how is he going to get this to me from up there in space? Standing completely still, I press my ear to the door. If I'm going to have a birth birthday surprise on Friday, I want to find out what it is. For a second, I still can't hear a thing. Then the sound of Mum's voice comes through the door. I got the letter from your solicitor, Dan. There's another two seconds of silence and then I hear Dad's reply. Well, we both agreed it was for the best. I thought it would help to get things moving. Mum laughs, but from where I'm standing behind the door, this doesn't sound like a happy laugh. I'm starting to feel confused. What's this got to do with my birthday present? You've always got to be first, haven't you, she says, even when it comes to getting a solicitor. I still don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, I still don't know what they're talking about. Being an astronaut is a dangerous job. There are tons of things that can go wrong in space. And Dad says you've always got to be prepared for the worst. Maybe this letter from a solicitor is to do with Dad's will, making sure that Mum, Charlie and me are taken care of if anything goes wrong. Not that it will. He'll be back home safe next week. But it's what I hear Dad say next, which rips the ground from beneath my feet and sends my head spinning. Sixteen years of marriage is a long time, Ali. Long enough to work out that we both want different things. Let's try and keep this divorce civilised like we both agreed. I stand there completely frozen, my ear still glued to the door. I can't have heard this right. Mum and Dad love each other. How can they be getting divorced? When do you want to tell Jamie and Charlie? Mum asks. There's another long pause. Two seconds that feel like a lifetime to me. When I get back home, Dad says. We'll tell them together. Behind me, I hear the sound of my little sister stomping down the stairs. Look, Jamie, Charlie yells. I turn to see a mini astronaut standing at the bottom of the stairs. Charlie is dressed from head to toe in a white jumpsuit with silver gloves and a big rocket badge. Her excited face beams out from her shiny space helmet. I'm an astronaut! Behind her, Haley peers at me with a puzzled look on her face. Are you okay, Jamie? she asks. Has your dad had to end the video call? No, I say, quickly turning away. Mum's still talking to dad. I just need to get some fresh air. As Charlie rushes into the living room to show dad her spacesuit, I head for the kitchen. Opening the back door, I step out into the garden, staring through my tears up into a sky full of stars. From the open barn door comes the thunderous sound of drums, Grandad's snare hits and cymbal crushes, soundtracking the confusion that's now swirling round my head. Nothing makes any sense. I thought Mum and Dad were getting on better now. They've not argued since Dad went into space. I thought they still loved each other. How can they be splitting up? Ninety degrees above the horizon, I see what looks like a bright star moving quickly across the sky. Automatically, I reach for the phone in my pocket, ready to check whether it's Dad passing overhead on the ISS. But on the home screen... I see the golden spiral, still frozen mid-spin, and I remember, but I've got something else to worry about. And if Dad doesn't believe me, I know someone who will. Okay, so year, year five, you have been learning about speech. So what I'd like you to do, I'd like you to um, think about the conversation that Jamie had with his dad, and then... Imagine that he did believe Jamie. So how do you think the conversation would go instead of how it did go? So imagine dad saying, oh, wow, Jamie, that's amazing. Let's see what we can do about it and then talk about the conversation. And remember to use the proper speech punctuation. So remember the speech mark sandwich and remember your butter, so you have your piece of bread, your butter, your filling, your garnish, your other piece of bread, and of course your label. So remember all of those things and remember your new paragraph for a new person speaking. And I look forward to hearing what you think the conversation would have been like if dad had believed Jamie. So I look forward to reading those pieces of work. Good luck.